Guys, approaching women isn't hard. You guys feel like you have to blow us away, sweep us off our feet, make us fall in love right there. But that's not how this works. This is the first time you're talking to us and you're doing it completely randomly. No girl's looking at you thinking, oh, this is going to go well. Most interactions with guys before you have been pretty awkward. So you know what's going to make you stand out? Just being normal, that's it. Guys, you're right, it is weird sometimes. Some guys will just stand there awkwardly. Other guys use weird pickup lines that never work. You know what does work? Making us feel like we're having a normal moment. This interaction doesn't need to be memorable. It just needs to be comfortable. Feeling comfortable around you will make us want to be around you again. So stop feeling like you have to be James Bond and just go start a conversation. No. Well, that's where you're just wrong, lady. Modern women don't want quote unquote normal. They expect a meet cute. They want a man to approach them and have instant chemistry, attractiveness, and leave a first impression that can only be described as a cosmic impossibility. It's come to the point where any form of awkwardness is a sign of creepiness, and creepiness runs far too many risks for the average man. Risks that outweigh the reward. And content like this just puts all of the blame on men, regardless of what he does, he's always at fault. If we don't approach, it's because we're not manly enough. And if we do approach, we're bothering women. And when given options like that, the only way for men to win is to not play the game. And your solution is to lie to men and try to shame them into doing one of the riskiest moves a man can do in modern public. Even though the solution is incredibly simple. You're the ones who are going to have to approach and give up the stupid idea that your life is just one gigantic romantic comedy that ends with a wedding. That would make us feel comfortable, normal, and actually want to be around you. But we already know this simple solution will never work, mainly because you won't let it work. You don't want normal, you want delusional. Oh, you know that. Of course I do, sir. Everybody knows that. Of course, course we, we do, do, sir. Is it ever okay to reach out to an ex? Yeah, actually, it is sometimes okay to reach out to an ex. It honestly depends on the reason why you're not talking, the reason why you guys broke up, the reason why, and like it, any scenario. It depends on that. And it also significantly depends on the amount of time that has passed. So if we're talking about you guys were only together for maybe three to six months, and maybe it's only been three to six months since you last talked and you want to reach out, it's not enough time. Those reasons why it didn't work are still there. They're not going to change. Day and night she talks. Each word more useless than the next. It never ceases to amaze me how much a modern woman can discard loyalty at the drop of a hat. Reaching out to an ex proves this. Modern women treat their exes as their backup plan in case things don't work out with Chadnam P.I. She'll break up with them, go out and have some fun, or get into a situationship with the man she does desire, and when it ultimately falls through, she'll reach out to the ex and assume he'll take her back because, well, reasons. She'll say she made a mistake or that she regrets her decision or whatever, but she only regrets that her future plans didn't work out and she expects her ex to merely pick up the pieces. It's a completely selfish act and it doesn't give any respect to how the man feels about this. Loyalty is a sacred virtue to the self-respecting man and if that loyalty is broken, especially by a woman, it's unfair to expect him to be okay with her reaching out to him. It just twists the knife and slows down his ability to move on. And it just goes to show that there's no punch below the belt that a modern woman isn't willing to throw if it serves her own interests. Same thing with if you were together for over a year. Give it at least a year. In any situation, give it at least a year. Because a year is enough time to go by for people to be in multiple seasons of their lives. And it gives them time to grow. Anything less than a year, I would say... Don't do it. Don't send that text. Give them their space. Respect them. Respect yourself. Wow, that's, that's, that's fantastic work, man. You have the you have the wisdom of a six or seven thousand year old man. That's fantastic. We don't have to fill up the whole blackboard after all. Okay, so in other words, give that man time to get over the relationship, move on with his life, and then show up out of nowhere to completely turn his world upside down just so you can be given the opportunity to destroy his life again. Yeah, that's awfully nice of you. And while you're at it, why don't you just pour sugar in his gas tank and frame him for selling bootleg Bob Seger tapes on the black market? At least he'd be able to keep some dignity if you did that to him. 
What you're failing to understand here is that there are some things you cannot fix once you break them. And for the most part, that includes relationships. You don't get to make a permanent life-altering decision only to come back and expect things to be hunky-dory. It doesn't work that way. If you go through a breakup, you live with the breakup. It doesn't just get to magically change because you don't want to be lonely anymore. You had your shot and you blew it. But I guess you're not through with committing as much collateral damage as humanly possible in that life of yours, which is just about on par with a modern woman. And also figure out why do you want to reach out to this ex? Is it for closure? Because you're never going to get closure from someone else. Okay? Closure comes from you. You don't need anything from them. Is it that you want to get back together? Will you be able to handle it if they say no? You've already been heartbroken. Do you want to go through that again? There's a lot to weigh out here, whether or not you reach out to that ex. Figure out your why. Why do you feel the need to? Do you miss them? Figure out why. Oh, it's Idiots! It's simple! Oh, well, the why is simple, woman. If you broke up with them and you're reaching out now, it's because you're willing to settle. You want the attention, the affection, and the knowledge that you can use this guy for resources. It's your way of avoiding accountability for your actions. The way he feels doesn't matter. All that matters is you get what you want. Now, this won't be true for all breakups, even I know this, but we're talking about modern women here. And in that context, unless the man was an inhuman monster, then we all know the story. It's all too common nowadays. And you don't deserve a second chance. If you broke up with this man for selfish and petty reasons, then the consequences of your actions are yours and yours alone to deal with. That man has suffered enough under your particular reign of terror and deserves the peace and freedom he created for himself, and you don't get to change that because you're willing to pretend to feel guilty. Just do that man a favor and leave him alone. Anything less will be uncivilized. If you're a guy and you want to be able to pull any girl that you want, I'm about to show you how. I know you guys usually take advice from your guy friends, but this is coming from a girl, so trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Number one, don't talk about hooking up or insinuate that you want to in the beginning. Being a girl, I know how many compliments we get on our bodies and surface level things in general. What is going to make you stand out is trying to get to know the real her first and then adding all the extra benefits. Also, pro tip. The fact that you are not falling at her feet and that you are different from other guys is going to make her want you even more. Play the long game. No, and I don't care. Well, if there's one thing you can always count on modern women, it's the fact that because they menstruate, they assume they represent all of the women on the face of the planet. Even though these women can only convey what they want, and this woman clearly is starting up a draft to get a new line of friend zone recruits for her dwindling army of simps. When you meet a man, you know if you want to sleep with them, but you're telling men to keep those desires to themselves to take the time to get to know you, and all that does is make you sound like you want the man for his emotional resources and nothing more. How do I know this? Because Tyrone doesn't need to get to know the real you. He automatically gets a fast pass to that rusted out roller coaster of mediocre fun time while the average men must wait in line and play that long game. And the reason why is simple. You don't want to sleep with the average man, which is fine. You're allowed to have your preferences. That goes without saying. But don't expect us to play your games. We'd rather have a padded sword fight over at Skeeter's house. Most of us would rather get hit in the face with a sword than waste our time finding out that there isn't an authentic bone in your body. We already know this. You make it obvious. Number two, communicate with her when you're not going to be on your phone. Girls are literally massive overthinkers and a little bit delusional. Our minds will literally jump to conclusions when you're not talking to us. So to ease our nerves, just let us know if you're not gonna be on your phone. Communication is key. Really? Yeah, I agree. Communication is key. So when exactly are you going to get on that little aspect of relationship life? Men could openly communicate when they're going to be off the phone and the delusional side of you will automatically assume he's cheating on you. He could text you regularly and you'll get annoyed because he's being too clingy. And if he doesn't text you to the amount that you deem satisfactory, then he doesn't care about you. And the best part is that you have no idea what this Goldilocks level of timing even is. It's just an imaginary amount that's based purely on Jupiter, when you last ate, and whatever dream you had the night before. It's a trap that sets up the man for failure no matter what he does. It's just one of the many ways you to make you think that you keep your options open in case you run into that one cute guy you saw at the gym six months ago who made eye contact with you on two, count them, two separate occasions. 
thus proving that this is completely arbitrary. Because I can guarantee you, sister, that man at the gym will not be held to the same standard. Number three, use keywords when complimenting her. I can literally make an entire video on this because there's so much to say. So let me know if you want it. What? <laughs> keywords? What in the hell are keywords? Why do average men need to have a list of words to use just for you to give them the bare minimum amount of your attention? It's kind of absurd that you assume that average men are so inept at talking to people that we need a list of words and phrases just to talk to a woman. If you actually need to hear some words, then you're probably not the right fit for the average man. We shouldn't have to memorize a list of words just to play the long con just for you to feign interest. It's kind of disrespectful, and we have better things to do with our time. So here are some key phrases for you to keep in mind, sweetheart. Not interested. You're not worth it. Get a life. Enjoy your cats. And my personal favorite... Nobody cares what you think. I think when done correctly, this is totally okay. The trick is to ask her questions to make her feel more comfortable. So before even introducing yourself, I would say something along the lines of, excuse me, do you have a minute? Give her a nice little compliment. I saw you walking by and noticed how beautiful you were. You seem like a really kind person. Um, and I kindly just wanted to let you know that. Gave her response. Nice try. Under normal circumstances, I would totally agree. A man should be respectful towards a woman he's interested in and take it from there. But this is the modern era. Things haven't been normal since the internet consumed the lives of the human population. It's no longer about a man's respect, it's about the man itself. An average man could walk up to you and do the exact same things that you're saying, and if you're even the slightest bit uncomfortable, then all of a sudden, that man has traumatized you with this toxic mansplaining. And that's the best case scenario. You clearly want the top 5% of men approaching you. Again, that's your preference and more power to you for having them, but here's the problem with that, sweetheart. Those men will never approach you. They do not have to. You will always approach them. They're the flame to your moth-like personality, sister. So the fact that you're giving advice to the men you clearly don't need it is nothing short of comical. Next step, ask her if she is single. If the answer is yes, then I think it's okay to go ahead and say, I would love to get your number and take you out. Is that something that you would be interested in? Keep asking these questions. Make her feel comfortable. Let her make the decisions. If the answer is yes, but I'm dating myself, I'm not looking right now, yada, 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 that's a no. So just respect that. Respect that the universe didn't want that door to open. And let her know to have a nice day and move on. Objection! Ask her questions and let her make the decisions? Woman, if we did that, we'd all starve to death while you go to grad school to figure out what you want for dinner. Not only that, but you don't respect men who let you make the decisions. You consider those men to be profoundly feminine, and it's those feminine men you'll always tell that you're not looking, or that you have a boyfriend, or that you're dating yourself in that little piece of battery-operated plastic you keep in your nightstand. You are setting all sorts of absurd rules and regulations for average men that they're only allowed to approach you at certain times, which are never clear, and then just automatically assume they're going to refuse rejection when the modern man knows better. One misstep, which you will take in every inconsequential form, could land them in jail. So as far as we're concerned, your schedule is clear. You're closed for business, which is fine. We'll just take our business elsewhere. I will say two things that I do not love as a woman are lingering and when someone tries to shake my hand. The world can be a scary place, especially for women recently. And we all have our guard up. And the last thing we want to feel is uncomfortable by a man approaching us and not, you know, respecting our personal space or our bodies, okay? So, if you don't know a random person, especially a woman, do not try to shake her hand and read the room. If she's not vibing, then let her walk away. So, hope this helps. There's the door, why don't you check it out? So if I'm understanding you correctly, a man should only approach you when you want him to, read the room and be able to read whatever vibes you think you feel. 
and he's not supposed to shake your hand because shaking your hand, which is a simple way to show some respect, is somehow unsafe. So we need to stand at the correct distance, not too far, but not too close either. A distance that you won't make known in any capacity, by the way. And we need to make you feel comfortable, even though this world is so unsafe that you can walk around in the daytime wearing revealing clothing while being completely oblivious to the world around you and have your phone out to complain about how this world is dangerous and how men need to respect that. Yeah, you really look terrified there, darling, but don't worry. We're taking notes and what you're saying to heart. We won't approach you. We won't even bother you at all. You're free to live your life as you see fit without any interference from us. And we'll do you even one better. We will do it permanently. That way you can live safely as you grow old with your cats. There's no need to thank this, but we're going to say it anyway. You're welcome. And that is going to do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. And as always, if you find that my particular brand of comedy is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button. Ring the notification bell, maybe leave a couple of comments, and be sure to share this video so we can give the good old-fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for checking out the new video, guys. And until next time, peace out, homies.